Ohio gozaimasu, minasan. Welcome back. Whew. We've got some fun for you guys today. We're going to be doing uh, Feral Resto 2v2s. Um, and I wanted to do something a little different because usually what I would do when I'm, you know, doing a video is I'll maybe show like the first minute, one or, one or two minutes of the start of the match, and then I'll cut out the like three minutes in the middle, and then I'll show like the mass, the last one or two minutes of a 2v2 matches because on average, these matches are lasting about five to six minutes, I think on average, and some of them can go eight, nine, even I've had some that go past 10 minutes, um, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> pretty crazy that they some of them go that long usually though it's around five six minutes and i think i want to watch it from the very beginning all the way through to the end so i can see every single thing that i do from the start of the match till the end of the match and see what i can improve on see what we're doing wrong that's stupid but before we do that i wanted to explain the the 2v2 how dampening works in 2v2 let's say um so let's go ahead and start this thingy I've got going on here. So at the match start, it's 20% dampening. That's uh, every 10 seconds, it's 1% dampening. And every one minute, it's 6% dampening. Um, so that's kind of how you do it. It starts at 25 minutes for the matches. So you can kind of just count them down that way. So 24 minutes is 26%, 23 minutes is 32%, 22 minutes, you know, everything going down. Um, I think the big one to notice would be 20 minutes, right? Once it's 20 minutes on the match thingy at the top, um, you're at 50% dampening. It's an easy thing to remember. And then you can just add six minute or 6% onto each minute afterwards. You can also just scroll over it really quickly with your mouse. Um, sometimes you're too busy in the heat of things. And it does kind of matter. Like it's kind of important to know what um, the dampening is at because at the start of the match it's going to kind of change how you play a little bit because it's going to be easier to heal at the start of a match than it is um, you know obviously five minutes in when your healing's reduced it also makes something like uh, warrior teams that we're going to show you the warriors they have um, their mortal strike which already reduces it by 25 percent and if they use sharpen blades for six seconds they reduce it by 50 percent plus the dampening. So it's like you could have your heals being reduced by 100%. And I don't know if that makes it so your heals do nothing if it's reduced that much or if it just makes it so your heals are doing like half or something, like just a shitload less. But either way, you heal way fucking less. So your heals are little dinky heals and it can make warrior teams really hard if you go too deep into dampening. Um, so it's something to keep in mind certainly. Um, the same thing can happen for survival hunters, or I think just hunters in general. Their pets also have a mortal strike uh, on them if they have the right pet. I think I think they have to have the right pet for that. And uh, so that's, yeah, it's just something to keep in mind. What else does it? Um, rogues, uh, assassin rogues, they do the poison. The wound poison is 25%, I believe. And there's one more. Am I forgetting any? I, I know that um, Unholy DKs, they can do Necrotic Strike or something like that, and it absorbs your healing, so those become really fucking brutal. If you get late into dampening with uh, an Unholy DK, you'll be in a lot of fucking trouble. <laughs> a lot of fucking trouble. Ooh. But um, anyway, enough rambling. Let's go ahead and start the match here. Let's get it at the very start. Here we go. We're counting down. We're fighting Resto Druid Warrior here. Um... For this one, we're running Thorns, which I think is the overall best choice. Uh, warriors can Spell Reflect, I think. I think Spell Reflect reflects the Thorns damage, but Spell Reflect doesn't last very long, so it only reflects a little bit of the Thorns damage. Um, but it is something to be aware of. Uh, so, you know, when the Feral has Thorns and I have Thorns, Thorns are up all the fucking time, and it's, it's really... It's really helpful to fight against these melee teams for damn sure. So here we go. We just got stunned. Um, I don't know if I needed to trinket out there. Like that might have been like more of a panic trinket than I needed. Um, so let's see. We're just getting some good heals. I could maybe try and get in and get cyclones. The Here's the issue with cycloning specifically in twos. I know in some of my other videos I've talked about I need to cyclone a lot more. Uh, which is true. Which is definitely true. I don't cyclone very much. Um, but playing with, a, for instance, a Feral Druid, he's dotting up both uh, the Warrior and the Druid. So if I Cyclone, that's going to reduce all of his bleed damage, but 
at the same time, he can't be healed, especially for something like a Resto Druid. That can really fuck Resto Druids over, right? Which is what we're fighting right now. Because if, say, we get the the Dru or we get the warrior down to like half health or something like that. Um, oh, he's like lining me just a little bit there. I don't, I don't know if he got stunned or not. He's really going for that kill. Okay, we're getting the Druid low. I jumped down. I should put a Cyclone on him. I did. He's got the OP uh, Night Elf... Uh, stealth thingy which i wish i had um i really love it on my alliance druid that stealth thingy is fucking broken it makes it so he can like always win the cyclone war if we're having a cyclone war because even if i'm casting cyclone first he just shadow melds and it's fucking that's it like he's he can just cyclone out of the shadow meld and i'm dead i'm not dead i'm cycloned but you know what you get what i'm saying um, so to go back to what I was saying, like right here, I should probably run over and cyclone that fucking guy. I just let him ch -ch 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 spam heals like crazy on himself. I did stealth and get a drink there, I think. So maybe that was a better choice. We're pretty early in. So, you know, my mana should have been okay, honestly. So I don't, I don't know. If, I think I should have cycloned him to kept, keep our pressure going because we had some pretty good pressure. And now they've caught up and it's kind of, we've kind of reset now. Um... So yeah, I think I that was a definitely an opportunity to get in and cyclone that guy, or at least fuck with him a little bit to like help keep some kind of pressure up. Even if I didn't manage to get the cyclone, it would at least get him to run around and panic and not heal as efficiently or as smartly as he maybe could. Um, so here we go. I should be healing touching. Yeah, getting good healing touches. Um, I'm sad to see that going in Battle for Azeroth. So see right there, cyclone, it's big. So all my hots, they're not doing shit. They're just rolling there, doing nothing. Um, they can be pretty big. Oh, Jesus. So, all right here, I'm going to get some dots on that guy. Feels good, man. Feels good. Uh, Jesus, they are getting fucking dunked. And by the way, this happens all the time to me, too, when I'm fighting against Feral Druids. Feral Druids are so hard to fight against. Um, you know, some people seem to have it figured out, and they're really good at it. So, right, like, right there, we got a stun. Now it's uh, catch-up time. We got to get some heals on our Druid. So here, here he goes. Um, I might have told him not to line of sight me there. I'm not sure. Um, get some big juicy heals. We got a stunned, short stun because we were already stunned by the druid, I believe. So you know, not a big deal. Um, yeah, he's fucking up that warrior. Oh my god, he's so low. Oh, should he have switched? I don't know if he should have switched there. Did he like kick a cyclone or something? Oh my god, that was so close to getting a kill. <laughs> we have a lot of pressure though. I should be cycloning the warrior. Is what I should have done. I should have cycloned at him and tried to fake out his uh, his thingy, because look at how much health he's got. Like, he's got tree form out. Should have cycloned the tree form, or should have cycloned the warrior. Like, this right there, whether or not the druid, uh, the feral druid should have left and not tried to get a kill on the warrior there, doesn't matter, because I super fucked us by not uh, capitalizing on all the pressure that he just built up. Um, yeah, I just let it all go fucking piss away. So right now, if you look at the time in the middle, we're at 20 minutes. Um, well, we're getting close to 20 minutes now, so we're almost at 50% dampening. So when a warrior does a sharpened blade, that will reduce my healing by a lot. So there we go. He tried to cycle on me. I just juked it. <laughs> I was, uh, he almost got me. I'm going to be honest. He almost fucking got me. Um, he jumped up to try to do that. I stunned him. See, now I'm finally getting some cyclone. Cyclone the warrior. Hell yeah. Get some pressure off the, the druid. I'll hot him up. Um, I should have been spamming wraths on uh, the druid here. I should definitely cyclone him now. Okay, so there we go. Got a sh uh, short cyclone. Uh, got another one. I'm gonna vortex on him, see see what goes on there. Okay, Feral's back there. I gave him thorns, so that's good. That means the warrior's gonna be taking a shitload of damage. I think the reason why they're both getting so low is because the, the warrior consistently attacks into thorns the entire duration. Like, he doesn't give a shit. Um, so there's thorns for the enemy druid. He's getting low. I got cycloned, but he should be okay. He popped a survival instincts there. Uh, that's one of his defensives. And uh, there you go. The warrior goes down, just like that. I think um, I think he might have also been attacking into the thorns from the feral druid. So, uh, whew. oh, okay. Let's let's pause that video. Holy crap. Um, and let's let's go full screen here for a minute. So let me think. So what all did I do during that match? What can we glean? Even though we won, what what was I consistently doing? One thing I was doing was um, this is sort of my play style. I stay max range, like forty yards away. I don't want to get near shit. 
um, which is okay, I suppose, right? Yeah, it's okay. But that does mean that I can't get into that 20 yard range to get those cyclones off. I, I definitely got to get in there more. Like there was definitely at least three or four like critical cyclone moments that I could have been in for. And then there was probably a bunch of like little cyclone moments that maybe they wouldn't have done anything, but there was definitely several critical moments, especially sort of near the end there where we pushed them both down. The warrior almost died. He jumped away. He was probably kicking the druid. Let me, let me click through here and see if I can find that moment again. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here's the moment. Oh, he was so low. You know what? You know what? If we look at that, so let's look at this. Would he have been able to kill the warrior there? Let's take a look. So he's getting kind of low. Uh, the druid doesn't look like the druid's casting cyclone. If we slowly go through this, you know, frame by frame here. Um, I do eventually click on the warrior. Look at him. He's like dead. Look at it. He's so close. But you see that? So he's in defensive stance and he has his parry up. So he was parrying a lot of the attacks. So maybe that's why he switched. Um, I should have like casted some shit on him. I, I might've tried, but see, we click on him right there. So he's got, what, what do we have? He has uh, his parry up. He's got full hots. He's got the three stacks from life bloom. He's got a scenario ward. Um, so he has everything rolling this this right here would have been a moment where if I was in closer, I could have maybe cycloned the Resto Druid. But because I'm playing so far back, I couldn't get in there and help at all. Um, oh boy. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know if he could have killed him there. Even though he had his parry up, I, he might have been able to, to kill through the parry somehow. Um, like if you get behind him, do they not parry? Or, um, you know, I'm not entirely sure. He, he was so close. He was like a moon fire away. Like I, if I would have moon fired him instead of, I was trying to keep him alive, obviously. That's why I was like spamming healing touches and stuff. If I just like hit him with a moon fire and a sun fire and like, and then went back to healing some more, maybe that would have been fine. Um, you know, didn't matter ultimately in the end, we did win. So that's fine. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you a pretty crazy fucking match here. So we're gonna start this match at 19 minutes into the match. So we're already at 50% dampening overall. And the match goes all the way up until 14 minutes and 27 seconds or something like that. So we're over 80% dampening for this match. Whew. How the hell do you get, how did you get that far into a match? That's That means this is over a 10 minute 2v2 match, 80% dampening. Um, let's see what the hell's going on here. So we're fighting um, a Mistweaver and an Ellie Shaman. Mistweaver's really fucking good in 2v2, I feel like. Um, I feel like we don't see a lot of them. The Way of the Crane is so broken. Ah, oh, Blizzard, it's so broken. I wish as a Druid, I had an ability that A, removed stuns from me, B, made me immune to stuns and snares, C, made me do a bunch of fucking physical damage, fucking D, healed me and my allies around me for the damage that I did, and fucking F, G, whatever, what are we on? Fucking, <laughs> it's on like a 45 second cooldown. What the shit, Way of the Crane is so good. Oh my God. I'm not salty at all, though. Don't don't mistake it. I'm not salty. I <laughs> I would love I would love it if I could go cat form and heal both of us and do a shitload of damage and be immune to stuns and stuff. Damn, would that be fucking OP as shit on a resto druid? Ooh, ooh, lad, that'd be nice. All right, so yeah, we're getting dunked pretty hard there. Just got a line of sight him. Um, it looks like for this match, I am running the healing touch spec. We're drinking a little bit of mana here. Um, he's getting kind of dunked by the, <laughs> the fist weaving over there, which sucks. Um, so he's going to run back to me. Um, he has thorns going, so he was running thorns. He doesn't have a lot of good talent choices on the thorns row. Um, so he can put thorns on when the monk's going all fist weaving. But I think he still heals through the thorns so like i don't know if the thorns even really make that much of a difference honestly um so there we go getting a nice cyclone off um what are we at uh, we're at 18 minutes jesus christ this match is insane 
So yeah, I'm running the Nourish Healing Touch spec. I, oh, is it called Abundance? Is that the talent? I, I'm just remembering because I've been recording a bunch of videos today and uh, from the other one. I couldn't remember what it was called. But uh, yeah, so we're just trying to keep him alive, trying to keep me alive. Um, I have to be careful what I do cast, but I don't think I have to be that careful because the, the Shaman kick is a very short kick. Um, here we go. He's taking a lot of damage. He's getting stunned and shit by uh, the monk. So I, yeah, just spam. I was spamming regrowth right there. I should have been spamming um, healing touches. Um, I don't run the healing touch spec as much as I used to anymore, especially during um, season like season five, or like some of the earlier seasons, I used it a lot, but I don't use it hardly any any or hardly at all anymore. Any anymore? <laughs> um, oh boy, look at this! Now we're at 17 minutes. Jesus. So what would that be? 50, 62 percent. We're at 62 percent dampening now. Jesus. Okay, there's the stun. I immediately removed it. Not a big deal. Okay, I was gonna try for vortex there, I think, but decided against it. Yeah, I definitely need to be casting. Um, healing touch on myself and on him more there we go healing touches now we're doing it there we are now we're getting it the the regrowths aren't bad because they're free, if they're free it's not a huge deal to use it there um the monk has not been ccing me very much they could have been a little more aggressive for ccs like if he does like his palm into stun into like a shaman hex or something like that so yeah, I was just telling him, don't line me here. Keep keep in my uh, my viewpoint. He was getting purged by the shaman. He just he pulled back the right decision, right? Where it like fucking, you know, 70% dampening now. Like my heals aren't amazing anymore. We gotta be careful. Like, oh my God, how does this match go on for like another minute and a half? <laughs> I don't even know. Okay, we're just going for it. Um, Jesus, uh, you know, more cyclones for me. Obviously, we've learned that. I don't I don't know how to cyclone very well. That's my fault. Okay, he's line of sighting. He line of sighted me there, but, you know, it's fine, whatever. So now it's like, okay, buddy, just stand still. Let me heal this shit out of you. He avoided the stun. There we go. Just going to top him off if they're going to let me spam healing touches. There we go. Spam healing touches. I'll do it. And right here, you see me? I'm clicking off my rejuvenations when I'm spamming healing touch on myself. And the reason for that, I fucked it up, but the reason for that is because when you do nourish or when you're doing healing touch with the nourish build, it puts uh, rejuves on the person first and then it puts um, life bloom. And since I had the three stacks of life bloom on him, I didn't want to life bloom myself and remove the stacks. So I was just clicking it off at the last second. And so it would just keep putting another rejuve on me. I don't know if that's the right way to play it out, um, it takes a little longer to heal myself, but I just wanted to keep the life bloom stacks on him um, So here we go vortexing in is the monk gonna fucking die now. There he goes. The monk goes down Here we are. We're over 80% dampening <laughs> shit's getting crazy um, And this is just spam healing touch time uh, uh, He kind of lined me a little bit. I was getting nervous, but I would have been able to kill the the guy on my own um, it wouldn't have been a big deal, but yeah, I was just heal touch, healing touch, healing touch, healing touch, healing touch. Please kill the fucking guy. <laughs> there it is. Oh, talking a million miles a second here. That was a fun match. Um, you know, I don't even remember actually playing that match. That's the craziest part. Like I, I was just looking through my old footage that I had, um, from the start of season seven and I saw that in there. I was like, oh my God. Did we seriously go that long? I think that's the longest 2v2 match I've ever had at, you know, what was that, 10 and a half minutes or something almost? Jesus. But um, there you go, guys. That was fun. Uh, it was fun going through, like, a whole 2v2 match. Um, maybe I should do that again and, like, do a long 2v2 match that we that we lose or that, you know, it felt like I was really pressured the entire time. Um, I definitely need to do long matches about uh, Feral Druids because I, I still struggle against Feral Druids. I'm going to have to learn how to fight them as well. But um, damn, good times, good times. Dampening, man. I'm, I, I'm happy that the dampening ramps up so fast, but I'm sad that the dampening is so necessary. You know what I mean? Um, because, uh, you know, I mean, I wouldn't, I, I this definitely didn't happen, but if I were to have been playing on, let's say, a Burning Crusade private server, which definitely didn't happen. Um, but if if some such a thing was happening and I was playing 2v2s on that particular, uh, you know, undocumented private server, uh, 
um, I would know that I run out of mana really fucking fast and there isn't dampening back then. Um, like really fucking fast. The matches are crazy. They're so intense in Burning Crusade. Holy shit. And in Legion, it's, you know, you got to wait five minutes for 50% dampening. And um, I understand why they have to do it because, you know, they've got to be able to keep people alive in 3v3. And uh, the burst is so crazy in Legion that if heals weren't super broken, you know, but like the mana pools are like, you know, kind of deep, you know, the, the mana pools are really fucking deep, a lot deeper than they've been in the past. So it takes a long time to oom um a healer, things like that. So the matches just go on forever. They just go on, um, especially in 2v2. So I'm glad that 2v2s, we get dampening right away. It was a good change. I'm glad they did it. Thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> let's, just, uh, let's just relax, take a breath here. We'll see you guys next time. Ciao, mata.